Hello guys, welcome to the second episode of the Not Hard series. This video will present the initial and normal operation of the Not Hard board. Just to remind you, previously we saw how to mount a 40 pins connector into a Raspberry Pi Zero. And how to mount a female connector onto the not hard board. So if you haven't watched the previous video and are interested to watch it, you can just click on the lower right corner on this video so you could see how to mount the not hard board into the Raspberry Pi Zero to do the mechanical assembly, insert the same cord or the battery. In this episode, we will see various things. We will install Raspbian Lite by downloading and loading it into a board. Also, how to prepare the SD card to be remotely connected using SSH. We are then going to configure the system and install several utilities. Also going to test the serial port and start the NAT hat board. And finally, we will send our first SMS to check if the system is operating correctly. To install Raspbian, you need to go over the raspberrypi.org website and click on the download tab. I chose to download the light version, so click on the link download zip. I will put it on the 32 GB SD card. Sometimes you will see a 16 GB because I made several boards. So once your file is downloaded and unzipped, insert the SD card into the memory card reader and connect the reader to your computer. So I'm using Etcher to burn the Raspbian image to the SD card. Etcher assures no more rating images on corrupted cards by automatically validate the burning. So let's start the burning by clicking on the flash button. So when the burning process is done, we are going to prepare the SD card to be remotely connected. Because if you are trying to insert the SD card to the Raspberry Pi, you will not be able to use it without a keyboard and a screen. So the first thing to be done is to create a blank document I called SSH without the extension. So be sure to remove it. Then we are creating a new document called wpasupplicant.conf and place it into the boot directory. This file will be copied to the etc folder at the machine startup. So if you have well configured the SSID and the password of your wireless router, you will be connected via Wi-Fi to your Raspberry Pi. So we are going to insert the SD card into the Raspberry Pi and connect the power cable to the Raspberry Pi to start it. When installing an operating system such as Raspbian, the first thing to be done is to update it. So at first startup, because of a new SSH connection to the Raspberry Pi, the system wants to know if it's safe so click yes. We are establishing a connection with the regular login and password by using PI as the login and Raspberry as the password. And we are going to do a two-step system update. The first command line 
is sudo apt-get update to retrieve the files list and then sudo apt-get upgrade to do the effective update. and type yes. This process will take a few moments to complete depending on your internet connection and because a Raspberry Pi Zero is not really fast. So bear with it with the help of a cup of coffee. Once it's done, you are going to install the RPI update to update the firmware. The apt-get command doesn't take too much time so I let the process finish in real time. And finally, Use the command sudo rpi update to do an effective firmware update. So the rpi firmware must be installed to Raspbian Lite because it is not initially installed. The firmware is now being updated and it is a piece of code located at the interface between the microprocessor and Linux. This part has to be updated if you want to take full advantage of the new features of the microprocessor. And of course, to save the modifications, we need to reboot the Raspberry Pi using the sudo reboot command. Once it has rebooted, we can now install some utilities. The first one to be installed is git by doing sudo apt-get install git. After the git installation, we can now clone every program supplied on the NatHat GitHub with the command git clone http colon slash slash 3w dot github dot com slash fpie slash nathat. The next tool to be installed is Wiring Pi, which is used to control the GPIO. It will be used later to send a pulse to the GSM GPRS module SIM 800C. And to check if the utility is installed properly, you can write the command GPIO-V to get the characteristics and type GPIO read all to retrieve all input output port values. Now we are going to configure and test the serial port and then go to the next step if the serial port is not working it's useless because the communication with the NatHat board will use the serial port. First of all we are going to execute the command sudo raspi-config to configure the language, the time zone, and the Wi-Fi country. So we use French for the language, Parish for the time zone, and France as the Wi-Fi country.
We can now configure the interface. So go to Interfacing Options section, then click on Serial to deactivate the Serial Logging Shell that generally uses this port, and finally enable the Serial Interface. Click on Finish to reboot the device one more time. So to start the port, we are going to open the config text file. And add at the end the following line. DT overlay equal file 3 dash mini UART dash BT. It allows you to swap the serial port on the Raspberry Pi Zero by connecting the GPIO to the high performance UART port. When it's done, we need to reboot the device. Then we are going to install a terminal. I choose Minicom, but you can choose any other terminal that you want. We will use this terminal to communicate with the NAT hard board. To test the serial port, I connected the pin 8 and 10 together. The pin 8 is set as the UART transmitter and the pin 10 as the UART receiver. So the pin 10 should receive any data sent by the pin 8. We are going to launch a test on the serial port with Minicom to check if the communication is working. If it's not, do not skip this step because you will never be able to communicate with the NAT hard board. So we are using a 115,200 baud rate, but you can use a 9,600 baud rate if you want. And the serial port used is TTYAMA0. Then you type whatever you want to check if it's working. For example, here I type Azerty, and I just got the echo showing on the screen. Then type Ctrl A to quit, and Ctrl X to exit. When everything is working fine, we can now mount back the NAT hard board on the Raspberry Pi Zero. So to start the SIM800C app, we look at the bottom of the circuit schematic and we need to send a zero pulse to the base of the transistor with one second duration using the GPIO26. To do so, there is a program provided by the NetHard directory that does everything. So go over the NetHard software directory and launch the program NADPWR.sh. When the program is launched, it will send a pulse to the GPIO26 and after 1 to 2 seconds, one LED goes on and a second LED blinks fastly. The LED with a fast blink means that you are not connected to a phone network. Now that the SIM800C is up, we will launch Minicom to communicate with our NAT hat board. The first command we are going to type is 80. And when you type 80, the NAT hard board answers OK, which means that the board, the communication, and the SIM800 circuit are working. If you type 80Z, the circuit is resetted. 
the AT plus CGMI command gives you the name of the manufacturer and AT plus CGMM gives you the name of the board. Now we are going to unlock the SIM card with the command AT plus C pin equal 1, 2, 3, 4. With 1, 2, 3, 4, the default pin code used by the free operator. And look closely to the LED blink speed, which goes from fast to low to indicate we are now connected to our free operator phone network. Then type 80 plus CNET scan to scan the nearby phone network. We can see operators such as Orange, SF4 and Buick's Telecom. To get the signal strength, use the CSQ command. Here we have a signal strength of 21 dB. I noticed the signal strength between 14 and 25 with all my tests. Now to send the SMS, we firstly configure the phone number of the NetHat SIM card with the 80 plus CSCA command and precise the dialing code, in our case it's plus 33. To send the SMS in text mode, we have to type the AT plus the MGF command. And the receiver phone number, which is mine, is configured using the AT plus the MGS command. Then you can type a text using several lines if you want. Notice that it doesn't like letters with accents because it replaced it with a special character. I put a double quote at the end, but it's not needed. When you finish, tap enter to send the SMS. My phone just vibrated and I received the SMS with the same text I wrote. So everything is working fine and we manage to send an SMS using a Raspberry Pi Zero. Now we are going to stop the board in a smooth way with the 80 plus CPOWD equal 1 command. Watch the LED switch off and the board stop. So we can send SMSs with the Raspberry Pi Zero using the NetHat board. Thank you for watching and see you next time.